Now you have been assigned to a vessel and should have received the trip documents from the National and Sub-Regional Observer Program. This is your contract. Your trip documents will have all the information you need to know before you depart on your trip, including travel documents, trip brief and contract. One of the most important documents is your contract. Please ensure you read the contract carefully before signing including the reference to zero tolerance of drugs or alcohol consumption on board fishing vessels, which if you are found to be in breach of, will result in suspension of your contract and possible termination. Please ensure a signed copy is provided back to the observer manager as the contract covers you for insurance while on duty. You should have been issued with an observer safety kit by your observer manager. The safety kit will generally include a life vest, PLB, and two-way satellite device. Please familiarize yourself with the safety equipment and how to operate equipment in an emergency. There are three life vests commonly used by ROPs in the WCPFC, the PFD Australia, Roaring Forties and Stormy Seas. To fit the Roaring Forties and PFD Australia, slip the vest on and clip the waist buckle together then tighten around your waist and close the zip. The Stormy Seas yoke style vests fit similarly and should be put on over each shoulder and fit the chest buckle. There are two types of waist buckle. A plastic belt buckle that can be simply clipped together and a metal buckle that needs to be fitted together. There is also a crutch strap on some vests that will need to be fitted to prevent the jacket from slipping off when entering the water. The crutch strap also ensures you float correctly if you're unconscious when in the water. All life vests have a whistle and a mouthpiece for manual inflation. You can blow into the mouthpiece to inflate the life vest if it doesn't inflate sufficiently when you enter the water. Some vests will also have a light attached, which activates on contact with water. We can now go through how each life vest operates. They are all automatic inflation life vests fitted with a switch which activates on contact with water. This triggers a pin into the CO2 canister that will cause it to discharge and inflate the vest very quickly. Please note that once the CO2 canister has been discharged and the switch comes in contact with water, they will both need to be replaced and the life vest serviced before reuse. There are three brands of PLBs currently used by Observer programs manufactured by ACR Electronics, Kinetic Technology International and Oceanic Signal. These devices are very easy to operate, being simply a personal electronic transmitter used to alert rescuers that there has been a life-threatening man overboard situation or MOB and rescue is required. <laughs> Both units are extremely accurate and an essential part of ensuring your safety while at sea as they aid quicker location and rescue. The devices are very simple to use and are manually activated via two simple steps. Step 1. Release the antenna and extend the antenna to vertical position. Step 2. Press the activation button. The PLD will now activate and begin flashing and transmitting. Please note, the PLBs will need a clear line of sight to the sky for the transmission to be sent. The PLBs will actively send a transmission for a minimum of 24 hours. Both these devices are waterproof to at least 10 meters. For the best results, if you are in the water, hold the PLB above the water with the antenna extended skyward. While the PLB is only useful for one-way emergency communication, for example, sending signals from the PLB to emergency search and rescue services, they are not capable of receiving messages. This is where the two-way satellite communication device comes in handy, as it will allow you to communicate via messages to your observer program manager and others. 
The satellite devices are particularly important when you are sending sensitive information to your observer program manager or responsible staff as it will allow you to send possibly sensitive information outside of the vessel's communication system. There are two satellite devices currently used by observer programs in the region, the DeLoam Enrich and Rockstar 7 devices. Both devices have the same function. They can send and receive messages from anywhere in the world if they have a clear line of sight to the sky. Messages can also be sent directly from the device or via a Bluetooth-connected tablet. The devices operate in a slightly different manner though. The DeLoam Enrich device is simple to use, much like a mobile phone while the Rockstar works differently and is a little more complicated to navigate. Both devices have an SOS function that works similarly to the PLBs and can be activated in a couple of simple steps. For the Enrich device, first ensure the device is turned on and then switch the lock button to off and press the SOS button. The device will then begin to count down from 20 seconds. To activate the SOS function on the Rockstar, simply uncover the SOS button and hold down for 5 seconds until it activates. When the PLB or the two-way satellite communication device SOS functions are activated, a signal is transmitted using radio frequencies. The signal is then detected by satellite and sent to a Mission Control Center or MCC, where it is then forwarded to the nearest Rescue Coordination Center or RCC. The RCC will then attempt to contact the registered contact details for the device to verify if it is a real emergency before they dispatch a search and rescue mission. False alarms can cause delay in the dispatch of search and rescue teams for people in actual distress situations, so it is very important to only use the PLB or SOS function on devices when it is an actual emergency. If you accidentally activate the SOS function on your PLB or satellite devices, Please immediately inform the observer program via a message that it was an accident activation. The signal sent earlier was a false alarm. 99% yes. of activations are false alarms, which can be a serious drain on resources. All your equipment should have been inspected by the safety officer and or placement officer. However, it is also important that you check your own safety equipment to ensure it is in operable condition and you are satisfied that it will function in an emergency. Here's a few quick checks you can do to make sure the safety equipment will function correctly when needed. For the life vest, check for the following. Check that the cap on the switch is still green and the plastic tab is still present. Also, check to make sure there is no wear on the life jacket that could affect its use. For the PLBs, make sure there is no physical damage to the device, there is no condensation in the PLB, and with the KTI PLBs, ensure the sticker has not been torn. Please, also note that the PLBs have a test button. However, please avoid testing the beacons as this consumes battery power and the devices may render the button inoperable to conserve power. The PLB devices will be tested annually by a designated staff member in each ROP. To test a two-way satellite communication device, ensure the device turns on and send a test message before departing. Make sure you receive confirmation the message has been received before departure. If you are unsure how to operate the safety equipment, please ask the placement officer or senior ROP staff member. Remember, the safety gear is there to be used and you are required to wear your life vest at all time when on deck, regardless of the circumstances. Also ensure that you always know where your safety equipment is as you do not want to have to search for it in an emergency. Observers must be present at the placement meeting when the placement officer will go through the WCPFC vessel safety checklist and the location of other important safety equipment on the vessel. During the placement meeting, make sure you familiarize yourself with any safety equipment on the vessel and where it is located. The placement officer should ensure that all the vessel's safety equipment is in service and operable. The vessel's safety equipment includes life raft, flares, EPIRBs, communication equipment, fire extinguishers, 
navigation equipment, and first aid equipment. In addition, please ensure you send your departure, weekly and transit records as per your contract so that your safety, well-being and trip progress can be monitored. Please also include information on the identification numbers of the life vest, PLB and satellite device that you were issued from your observer program. You are representing your country and region as the eyes and ears of the government while on observer duty. Please act accordingly and in a professional manner always. Inappropriate behavior will not be tolerated. Finally, good luck on your trip and remember, put safety first at all times. Look after your observer's safety gear because at the end of the day, the safety gear is there to look after you and get you home to your family. Thank you.